Two delegations, ladies and gentlemen, after the meeting that has just been held, you will be addressed by the President of the Republic, Alexander Vucic, and Secretary General of NATO, Mr. Jens Stoltenberg. Unfortunately, due to obligations of both delegations, we have time for two questions for each speaker. I kindly ask Secretary General of NATO, Mr. Jens Stoltenberg, to take the floor. President Vucic, there, Alexander, uh, thank you so much for the warm welcome. It's great to be back in uh, Belgrade and to meet uh, with you uh, again. Um, Serbia uh, is an important regional actor and a long-standing partner of uh, NATO. A good example of our cooperation is the joint work we have done over the past 10 uh, years to NATO's Science for Peace program and the way we work uh, together also in different uh, fields. Um, and uh, under the Science for Peace program, uh, we work on energy and environmental security advanced technologies and cyber defense. I look forward to seeing some of these uh, activities, uh, some examples uh, um, uh, of our important cooperation uh, between um, uh, NATO and Serbia when I meet uh, some Serbian scientists later on today, demonstrating how NATO scientists and Serbian scientists are working together. Uh, during our breakfast uh, and our meeting, we also discussed the possibility of resuming joint military exercises. Uh, NATO and Serbia have had joint military exercises uh, before, and actually you and I have also visited a, a joint uh, Serbian-NATO uh, civil preparedness exercise some years ago, and we would welcome uh, the possibility of resuming uh, these kind of exercises uh, in the future. And I look forward to further strengthening our cooperation. Uh, and President Vucic and I, we just discussed the recent tensions in the, the north of Kosovo and the continued importance of NATO's K4 peacekeeping mission. For two decades, uh, K4 has ensured a safe and secure environment in Kosovo for all communities. We will continue to do so impartially and in line with our UN mandate. Uh, in May, our K4 troops uh, were attacked, uh, 93 of them uh, were wounded, some suffered life-changing injuries. In September, we saw another outbreak of uh, serious violence in Kosovo. This is unacceptable, uh, the facts must be established, the perpetrators must face justice. Therefore, I welcome uh, that Serbia is prepared to cooperate in these efforts, as we also discussed during our meeting. In the wake of the violence, NATO has deployed around 1,000 additional peacekeepers and heavy armor to Kosovo. This has been the biggest reinforcement of our contingents in Kosovo in a decade, and it shows that NATO stands ready to preserve peace. I welcome the close and continued coordination between the Serbian Armed Forces and K4. This is important to ensure timely information sharing to avoid uh, uh, any misunderstandings. I count on all sides to reduce tensions and to refrain from escalatory actions. As I said, uh, uh, President Vucic, during our meeting, um, uh, the Serbian military buildup uh, of forces near the administrative border line again would not uh, help the situation. I welcome the EU's latest proposals for the establishment of the accession of, um, oh, sorry, of the uh, association of Serb majority municipalities in Kosovo. This would be a, a key step toward normalization of uh, the relationships. I call on Belgrade and Pristina to engage constructively in the EU facilitated dialogue. This is the only path to a lasting peace and stability. We also discussed uh, Russia's war against Ukraine. We should continue to clearly condemn Russia's unacceptable aggression as uh, Ukraine enters uh, a second winter of war. Support from NATO allies and partners remain essential. So President uh, Vucic, there Alexander, it's uh, great to be back and thank you for a very constructive and good meeting. Thank you, Mr. Stoltenberg. Hvala, General Sekretaru. Molim predsjednika Republike Srbije. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. I kindly ask the President of the Republic of Serbia to take the floor. First of all, I welcomed Secretary General of NATO, Mr. Stoltenberg, a man who 
is connected to Belgrade in many ways and also connected to Serbia and for whom I can say that has always personally tried within the limits of his mandate to be fair uh, towards our country and I want to thank him for that. We discussed all important issues for more than an hour and a half and um, for us, it's, it is important that I can confirm what Mr. Stoltenberg said. Cooperation with NATO is important for us, as well as cooperation with K4, hoping that, to the extent possible, we will ensure safety and security for Serbian people in Kosovo and Metohija. And when uh, Mr. Stoltenberg says that K4 secures peace and security for all communities in Kosovo. There was no need to ensure peace and stability for anybody else except for Serbs. Serbs are the only who were jeopardized and attacked. Albanians were never, have never been attacked. To be clear, Serbs were the exclusive exclusively those who were attacked in 2001, 2004, particularly after 2008, and in particular since Albin Kurti has come to power. I informed Secretary General Stoltenberg with the fact that uh, uh, almost 13 percent of Serbs left Kosovo and Metohija in the past year due to huge pr pressure apprehensions harassments and threats that come from Pristina regime. If that's not the violence, and I do know, I'm not speaking about NATO, I'm speaking about the so-called collective West. If this is not violence, then I don't know what violence is. Just like I know that the West is interested only in Banjska and before that Zvechan, that fight that um, occurred with K4 representatives when uh, they moved forward to try to preserve Pristina's special forces vehicle. So we have different views on what happened, but we do understand well what the demands from the West and from NATO are. We will try in the future to have best possible communication with the NATO. Uh, speaking of Serbian armed forces, it did its um, tasks professionally. It never went beyond its mandate, its authorizations. It has always had fair relationship with K4 and NATO and how and where in accordance with the Constitution and the laws of the Republic of Serbia without jeopardizing anyone, we would deploy our armed forces. That's our business. And speaking of um, the issues about Zvechan, I just want to remind Secretary General and everybody else uh, that all that happened because some had elections with 3% turnout, and with that turnout they declared the rule of those imposed mayors as legitimate and legal, and when Serbs uh, opposed to that, they brought their police, and so that's how the conflict was caused regarding Banska, I would like to remind the entire world public that it happened a year after some deceived Serbia and they signed the declaration in December 2021 and I'm speaking about representatives of the US and the EU that, that those who the people who were in barricades would not be prosecuted and persecuted, and then literally Albanian police officers who, by the way, in accordance with the law and the Brussels Agreement, have no business in the north of Kosovo and Metohija, as well as members of Kosovo security forces who, meanwhile, were shooting at Serbian children for carrying uh, Christmas trees, who also, in accordance with Resolution 1244, have no right to exist at all, but who cares for the right and United Nations and Resolution 1244. So that provoked such a situation that Banska occurred, with which we, of course, do not agree. And that is why we, in accordance with the national law and our national legislation, we will make accountable those who took part in uh, those 
criminal act in Banska. And when it comes to our cooperation with NATO, it's a correct, it's a fair cooperation, it's a good cooperation. When someone in decent way talks to you, then we are always capable of saying there is no need for so much soldiers here and there. But that kind of orders we do not take from anyone because Serbia is a military neutral country and we will remain military neutral. And it is known who is running and commanding the armed forces of Serbia. Regarding any poss possible exercises, we agree today, we discuss today. And as a supreme commander of armed forces, I will send the, the application or request to the government of Serbia Serbia to take into consideration the forthcoming period the decision to renew and to resume uh, joint exercises with the NATO just like we used to do and also with our other partners. It is really important for us that people understand that uh, it is very difficult to explain to people in Serbia and this is where we fully agree with NATO that N NATO's mandate is based on resolution 1244 that is why we welcome the presence of NATO troops and K4 troops we want to see even bigger presence of K4 NATO troops we have no problem with that just to make things quite clear but we have issues with political interpretation that comes from many countries in the West that is the resolution 1244 we liked the resolution 1244 when it speaks about NATO mandate but we don't like it when it speaks about the territorial integrity of Serbia but what can you do we Serbs and cities of Serbia must get used to those double standards that's what we live with and we know that we are always going to be blamed until we comply with the existing standards for which they say our standards and principle and speaking about the political West here. Anyway, I want to thank Mr. Stoltenberg because he is a man who without any fault of his has to listen all my uh, political uh, anxiety, so to say, and to listen to us. And the other side, of course, they did, they, or they did nothing. They acted uh, professional, responsibly, always. And it seems to me that General Moisilovic, that we have always had fear cooperation with NATO and that's what's important for us uh, when it comes to Serbia Serbia will preserve peace Serbia will preserve stability Serbia is working in the dialogue process uh, Serbia is doing everything to reach compromise solution to be completely open with you Mr. Stoltenberg just I just like I was during our meeting just like I always am the community of Serbian municipalities is not going to happen. It's not going to be established as long as Albin Kurti is in power. They're only going only to look for excuses. Once they'll say we need the signature, next time he'll say I need I don't know what. They're not going to form any community, not even the one that is taking the part of our authorization and principles signed in 2013 and 2015. But I know that um, big Western powers will always take care of their baby. They give birth to and we Serbs who survive he will be there to speak about it anyway I believe that the meeting we had today was very good important for Serbia I heard not so easy words uh, from Secretary General Stoltenberg regarding our position he heard what Serbia honestly thinks and I want to thank him for being always able to call him, to make a telephone call him, to ask for support, to ask for some help. But we will have to improve our relations with NATO. We will have to try to regain the trust that was lost. But we will still keep jealously keeping our military neutrality. Thank you once again. Thank you, Mr. President. We can now move to your questions. Tanyuk Agency, Maria Stošić. Good afternoon. Uh, the first question is for Mr. President. Mr. President, until when the objective for Serbia will be moved? They were speaking about the resignation of Albanian mayors. It did not happen. You mentioned signed agreement on the community of Serbian municipalities as of 2013. Now there is going to be a new one with much less authorities than in Brussels agreement. How far will this scale of Serbia thus will go to? 
the condemnation of Vanska action. Will someone be accountable for persecution and attacks against Serbs in Kosovo and Metohi? And a question for Mr. Stoltenberg. Will NATO ask for apprehension uh, and bring into justice those who shot at Dragisha Galjak in Zvechan, who was shot with two bullets uh, by the members of the so-called Kosovo Special for Police Forces? Thank you. They will never be account accountable for that. No one will be brought to justice. Nobody is even investigating the case. What are you talking about, people? They arrested Dušan Obrenović, for whom we showed the video. Even NATO agreed that that man did nothing. And he's still in custody. He's been detained since May. He was only K4 forces only pulled him into their circle. He was not making any resist. He did nothing. And regarding Dragisha Galek, there is no investigation. He was shot with two bullets. Who cares? He's a Serb. He's not a man. He's a Serb. We Serbs are not quite some people. Everybody is entitled to shoot at Serbs. But then the entire world will sit on your back if the opposite case happens. That's the justice for Serbs, but it has nothing to do with Jens Stoltenberg. What, he, what can he do about that? That's not his job. His job and the job of NATO is not to run the investigation. That's the job of ULEX and other authorities. That's the job of Pristina police. The man was so fair that he said, why, did not, why didn't you inform me personally, called me personally when that happened on 6th of January? I don't like to abuse that. I, okay, no problem, so I'll take the phone, pick up the phone and personally make a call to the Secretary General. But I want to tell you it has to do with Pristina police, a man who shot kids who it was their, their fault was because they were carrying a Christmas tree, as we say, the oak tree for Christmas. That guy is free, walking around. He will never be held accountable for anything. Who shot Dragisha Galek? Who cares? Who shot seven Serbs? Well, who cares about that? That's not Banska. Who cares? People were shot with two or three bullets. What was the last name of the man who was shot near Bistrica for carrying the dishes? Jovanovic. Jovanovic was carrying some dishes to sell in the market and he was shot because of the plates and spoons. So it ain't going to happen. They will never be held accountable. Nobody would ever ask them anything because that's all normal. And regarding this, this moving of the scale for us, that's what they always do and they will keep doing that because the entire point is when we are going to recognize the independent Kosovo. That's not much of a news for us. What's much important for us is what we discussed with Jens Stoltenberg and how to preserve peace, how to uh, ensure and secure stability for Serbs in Kosovo and Metohi because they are the only ones jeopardized in Kosovo and Metohi. Serbs are the only jeopardized over there. There are no other people who are jeopardized. If NATO can help, we'll thank them for that. We are going to be immensely grateful. We will cooperate with them. We'll do everything we can together. And that's it. Our armed forces have excellent cooperation with K4. If K4 sa would say to us, come on, people, for us to feel better it's needed to do something, we'll do anything in agreement with them. But to be ordered from Pristina, what our armed forces is, are going to have on 10 or 15 or 20 kilometers away from there, it doesn't even occur to us in any way. So, any, But any kind of cooperation at K4 is welcome, it's okay, but when it comes to politics, that's a different story. There is no luck in that for us, at least not in, uh, not in short terms. So NATO is based on some core values and principles, and one of those uh, core values and principles uh, is, of course, uh, the rule of law. And uh, any violation of, uh, uh, of uh, the rule of law and, uh, and, uh, and uh, killings of, uh, of, uh, of uh, civilians is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, and, 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 and as always, those responsible must be held accountable, regardless of who is the perpetrator or who is responsible, uh, because uh, this is about uh, uh, upholding some core principles about the rule of law. Uh, then I think it is important to understand, as also President Vucic alluded to, uh, the role that NATO has. The first responder when it comes to the rule of law is the Kosovo.
Kosovo authorities and the Kosovo police. Then the second responder uh, is Ulex. Uh, and then NATO's military presence is not a, a, a law enforcement presence. Our presence is there to ensure stability and, uh, and to ensure uh, that we uh, live up to our uh, UN mandate uh, in an impartial way. So uh, uh, NATO is not a law enforcing authority in, uh, in Kosovo. We are there with a military presence and we have actually increased our military presence uh, with uh, around 1,000 personnel because of the increased tensions and, and violence. But rest assured, every time we see violations of, of, uh, of uh, the law, uh, of, uh, we see innocent people killed, then of course the message is the same, that those accountable must uh, be held, uh, that, that those responsible must be held accountable. Then let me just also briefly say that I welcome the message from the President, uh, President Vucic, on, uh, on uh, the resumption of uh, joint military exercises. Uh, I really believe that uh, NATO and Serbia can do more together, and it demonstrates that we have a partnership that goes far beyond the issues we address in Kosovo. We work together on different science for peace projects, we work together on, on, uh, on uh, joint uh, exercises, and we also are grateful for uh, what, what Serbia has done uh, in support uh, different uh, activities by NATO and how NATO has helped to work together with Serbia over many years. The fact that we have exercised together and that we have had joint military exercises between Serbia and, um, uh, and NATO uh, uh, doesn't mean that, uh, that, we don't, uh, that, that that undermines Serbia's neutrality. Uh, Serbia has made it very clear that they uh, will remain, that Serbia will remain a neutral country uh, outside military blocs. We totally respect that, but we uh, continue to believe that uh, as a neutral country outside military uh, uh, blocks, uh, Serbia can work closely with the NATO, and that will benefit NATO and benefit Serbia. Mustafa Osturk, uh, Anadolu Agency. Mustafa. Uh, my question is for the Mr. General Secretary. Uh, Mr. General Secretary, after the armed clashes in north of Kosovo, Pristina demanded NATO to guard its, bo its border with uh, Serbia, while Serbia demands NATO to provide more security for Serbs living in Kosovo. Is NATO planning to take some steps to provide the requested uh, security? And also, Serbia will hold general uh, elections soon. So is NATO planning to secure environment in north of Kosovo for Serbs living in uh, Kosovo to participate in the elections? Thank you very much. Again, NATO's presence in Kosovo is based on a UN mandate that gives us an important role uh, to uh, uh, protect all people and to protect the free movement of all people in Kosovo, but it doesn't put, put, put NATO into the law enforcement role. We are not the police, we are a military force. The law enforcement uh, role, uh, the, the police uh, uh, authorities and, uh, and, uh, and, and tasks, that's partly the Kosovo authorities, the Kosovo police, and partly the ULEX. So again, I think it is important to understand what NATO uh, uh, is doing in Kosovo and what we are not responsible for in Kosovo. Since the increased uh, uh, tensions, the increased violence, uh, NATO has decided to increase its presence. Um, I met with the care for troops uh, in Kosovo uh, yesterday. I also went to the north, um, uh, to one of the NATO bases up in the north. Uh, and of course, what I saw there uh, was a strong, uh, committed uh, NATO force, uh, which is there, of course, also to ensure uh, the protection uh, of, uh, of, of the Serbs living in the, in the north. Uh, we are now conducting a review uh, of our uh, presence. Um, uh, we had many more troops uh, not so many years ago. It has gradually been reduced. Uh, the additional 1,000 troops is the biggest reinforcement uh, of our uh, K4 presence for at least a decade in, 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 Kofro, in, in Kosovo, as we have seen over the last uh, uh, weeks. Um, the review which our military authorities are conducting uh, is uh, looking into whether we should strengthen the mission on a more enduring basis, because what we have done so far is to call in reserves. 
and now we are looking into whether to have a more enduring uh, increased presence. No decision has been made. Um, and uh, this is uh, then about not only using the reserves, but uh, having a higher baseline for our presence. Again, we are looking into different options. No, no decision has been made, but what has happened is that we have added a thousand extra reserves uh, to the K4 troops in, uh, in Kosovo. If I may add to your Turkish friend, the real issue is about exercising the right to vote for Serbs, as you know. And Serbs will exercise that right in Australia, in the United States of America, all over Europe. But still, it's in doubt whether those people, not only in the north, but south of River River as well, will be able to exercise their right to vote in 25 days or not. Why? Nobody questions that. Why? Because it's just Serbs. And uh, it did not happen last time. It was a sort of commence of the crisis when they did not allow Serbs to vote last time in 2021, 20, if I'm not mistaken. And now what's the reason to ban the right to vote? Because those people might vote even if they live tens of thousands of kilometers away from here. But those people think that they live in the same country as we do, in accordance with the UN Charter in accordance with the Resolution 1244. And now they are going to be deprived of the basic rights they have once again in adherence with human rights charters and UN resolutions. And this is the question. And to tell you the truth, I know in advance what will happen. Kurti, because he wants to help some people an electoral process, I'm not going to mention it. Which people? And he's going to say, no, there won't be elections in the north, not in the south as well. And then we'll have a clear condemnation in one statement made by Quint. And that would be the end of the story. Serbs will not vote in Kosovo and Metohia. And this is what will happen, as always. Anyway, once again, many thanks to Jens, to Secretary General, and because he has always been very helpful to this country, and we appreciate and we respect that. And he has always been at least open to hear different views and different opinion from Serbia, and uh, we'll never forget it, and thank you for this and hope that we'll be able to make our relationship more trustful and uh, even better than it used to be. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Secretary General. Dear colleagues, we thank you. We hereby end today's press conference. Thank you very much.